You know what, blowing up the earth is fun, you know, whether it be round or flat, but I, I think it's time that we start going bigger. I I'm gonna try screwing with the solar system. You know, we've got Jupiter, Mars, Earth, Venus, Mercury, as defined by YouTube's terms of service, Uranus cannot be on screen. <laughs> but it looks like I only have a couple of different abilities here. I, I can probably screw with some orbits and maybe throw some rocks, open a black hole. I mean, not to be anticlimactic, but I feel like you have to start with opening a black hole next to the sun. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Solar Smash, the only game that's unequivocally proven that Flat Earth is real. Flat Earth was real until all the lizard people at NASA decided to cover it up. So last episode, a lot of you guys seemed to enjoy watching me screw around with this middle school level perception of reality. And I blew it up a whole bunch, but I never thought to try defending it. Because we do have shield technology, we just don't know how the shield technology is going to handle a mess like this. Because it is technically a satellite, and we've seen that satellites have a real hard time trying to orbit a space plate. Like some of them just take a dive right into the surface. So hopefully, the shield can just open a little something like that. I mean, it's a little bit wonky, but overall, better than nothing in some cases. Actually, I get the feeling if we grabbed something like a boulder the size of Germany and hucked it at Australia, then this one shield might feel a little lackluster. We might want to wrap things up a bit. Then again, we only killed 8 million people by wiping out the entire continent of Australia. It, partially because Australia doesn't actually exist, partially because criminals are meteor proof. Well, now that we all know Google is part of the cover up, how about we actually try covering up our planet? I, I'm gonna use as many shields as I can and hope that they'll be able to cover everything. <laughs> I don't actually know what happens if I use as many shields. I've only ever used one at a time, but. We can deploy as many as we want, it seems like. All right, boys, hopefully we have a, uh, ooh, that's um not really the angles I'm looking for, guys. <laughs> I think the satellites still perceive the world as round. They're still based in reality, whereas the rest of us are left wondering, how is this gonna protect from anything? Just like the people who believe in a flat Earth, we're gonna have the flat Earth itself live inside of its own special little bubble. <laughs> a place where it's protected from the rest of reality. And I wanna test this out really slowly. I wanna go all out at once, so I'm thinking maybe we launch a nuclear missile, or two, or half a dozen. That's my bad, I've got a bit of a twitchy nuke finger. <gasps> but... It looks like the shield's held up. I'm not seeing any death or nuclear fallout. Alright, then we'll ramp things up a little bit. And you guys were telling me in the comments that apparently it's not 69 to summon the Space Force anymore. It's 66. Why would they change that? Did they change that? Am I losing my mind? Wasn't it 69 at one point? I feel like way more people are going to try 69 and find this Easter egg. Either way, now I should be able to summon half a dozen ships. Question is, are they smart enough to avoid flying directly into a shield? Yes. Yes, they are. Who would have guessed that spaceships have seen shields before? Well, they fired off a whole bunch of shots, but once again, the shield seems all right. That one there is a little bit pissy, but the rest are okay. There's a definite possibility that this is going to be a little bit overkill, but I'm going to try a couple of antimatter bombs and see if one of them can slip through. I think they have the ability to damage stuff on the other side of a shield without breaking the shield itself. But that doesn't seem to be the case this time. Nope, Earth is still laughing at us. Damn it. This should be really interesting, because the moon doesn't just disappear after it hits. It's gotta go somewhere, either it's gonna break up or it's gonna bounce off, but it doesn't really have anywhere to go. Well, it wedged itself in between a bunch of the shields and then just lost all of its momentum. 
<laughs> well, that did the most damage, but it's still not nearly enough. These shields are actually starting to piss me off. They're somewhat impressive. Imagine going through all this effort just to protect one flat space turret. <laughs> like, that's a lot of technology being used just to stop a fart monster from slapping the surface of your planet. <laughs> I'd be willing to bet he could karate chop his way through this. He's a bit of a tough guy. Come on now, single punch. Show him how it's done. Huh. He actually did it. He cleared out all of those shields. <laughs> and somehow killed almost everyone. I'm not seeing any damage to the surface, but I think it was just the shock wave that killed everybody. Well, I suppose we should let him finish what he started. There you go, get a good side punch in. Yeah, that took a piece out of the planet. I just, I don't understand why the shield can't stop a monster like that. You'd think it would at least pose a little bit of resistance. The only reason the planet didn't die there is because his arms weren't long enough. The planet itself is practically untouched, so let's play a little game of guess where the remaining 47 million people are. I mean, we know there are at least 8 million living in Australia, so if I nuke that real quick, we should drop exactly 8 million. Easy enough. I wonder how many are living in Canada. Uh, hopefully I don't bleed over a bit into America. Canada has nobody living in it. It's uninhabited. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me right now. Okay, hold on. What would happen if I nuke where I am? Uh, I think I'm over here somewhere. Flat Earth is a little bit hard to navigate. I want to say that everything... Found me. So what about China? China has to have at least a couple million people, right? Or one? There's one million people living in China. Not a billion, not a couple billion, just one. India, you got anything? It's gotta be at least a zero. It's gotta be zero, okay. <laughs> just wait. I'm gonna hit one sweet spot, like the Middle East, that apparently had 10 million people in it. How? What about Africa? Anything? It, it just doesn't make any sense. There were 10 million people there too. Okay, well this is just screwy. Maybe the remaining 19 are in the North Pole. <laughs> I'll nuke Santa and that'll wipe out nothing. I guess elves aren't technically people. All right, fine. We're just gonna evaporate the rest of this. Get the job done. <laughs> I wanna see zero remaining. Come on, there we go. Give it to me. All right, well, I feel pretty good about this experiment. Definitely did my best to defend Flat Earth, but in the end, fart ghosts always win. You know what, blowing up the Earth is fun, you know, whether it be round or flat, but I, I think it's time that we start going bigger. I I'm gonna try screwing with the solar system. You know, we've got Jupiter, Mars, Earth, Venus, Mercury, as defined by YouTube's terms of service, Uranus cannot be on screen. But it looks like I only have a couple of different abilities here. I, I can probably screw with some orbits and maybe throw some rocks. Open a black hole. I mean, not to be anticlimactic, but I feel like you have to start with opening a black hole next to the sun. I want to see the whole thing get gobbled up. Or not. Mercury got gobbled up, but the sun is just kind of getting towed along and slowly siphoned. It's gonna screw with everything's orbits, but are we gonna be left with a tiny little sun? Is the black hole gonna be able to escape this thing? Or is this thing gonna be able to escape the black hole? <laughs> Let's be honest, the sun is not the one in charge here. If anything, it's probably just gonna slip off screen and then immediately go supernova. <laughs> yup, and that's just gonna shit on the whole works, isn't it? Alright, well, I guess it's a good thing that we don't get to see my anus explode. I mean, your anus, damn it! I, <laughs> I screwed the joke. You guys know what I mean. Hold up a second. I can open a black hole inside the sun. Because now, if I zoom out, it should be right in the middle of it. <laughs> I can't imagine the sun is gonna like that, so much so that it's just gonna go for a run. Did the black hole just peace out? It's gone. How does that work? 
I don't think I understand space quite well enough to be able to define everything that's happening here, but you wouldn't think a black hole would just toss up deuces and then leave the sun intact. So if I could change any planet's orbit to be whatever I want, does that mean I could just take the Earth and... Oh, the moon was like, nope, I can guarantee he's about to hurl the Earth into the sun. I'm getting the hell out of here. <laughs> And he's right! I am gonna hurl the Earth into the sun. Just need to get this lined up. Okay, calm down now, Earth. A little something like that. Probably should have put more power behind it. This feels a lot like a mix between Universe Sandbox Sim and Pool. You know, like the harder you pull back, you gotta line up the balls. Except instead of 8-ball corner pocket, we get humanity and fiery demise. The other plan is do not give a rat's ass. I love it. Don't think for a second I forgot about you, Saturn. I'm just hanging out over here, minding your own business. I want to try hurling rocks at you. Can I do that? Where can I throw a rock? I, I didn't see a rock. My... Oh, no, they are there. Yeah. Little tiny rocks that I'm creating, and then it's just orbiting into them. I mean, I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to throw rocks so that they would then be able to enter its orbits and create more rings. We could make Saturn even cooler, but instead I just Death Starred the whole thing. But we've seen Earth versus a black hole in Planet Smash before, but I get the feeling System Smash is going to be quite a bit different. And once again, the moon just dipped. It wants absolutely nothing to do with humanity's stupidity. As soon as the Earth is in trouble, it's out. And it looks like we've really messed up space-time here. Oh. And it doesn't go away. Uh, how close is this to the sun? Oh, that could be a problem. Hey, Venus? Where are you going? You really don't need to be like this, buds. I mean, it was meant for Earth. You could just... Pull a moon and get out of here. Nope. Instead, it got squished like a golf ball being hit. Spaghettified. I don't need to be a space biologist to know that that's not good. <laughs> the sun's getting mighty small. Get the feeling the rest of the planets are about to get microwaved. Is it actually going to be able to suck it in? No, they bounce off one another. How is that possible? It's as if the black hole has mass to it, but I thought it was the opposite. Again, I don't know enough about space to explain everything that's happening here, but I know that Big Boom is really going to ruin things. Hey, Pluto, do you remember that time Earthling said that you're no longer a planet? Well, how about we get your revenge in having you smash into them? Just head over that way. Maybe a little bit faster? I haven't exactly got all the time in the world, because there isn't going to be a world for long. Oh, Earth, you better speed up, because Pluto's coming! Yeah! Oh! Oh! I kind of figured Pluto would win there, but I guess in all reality, the bullet doesn't usually outsurvive the target. Just not the impact I was going for. Fortunately, I can stop time, which means I should... Oh, wait, what? Uh... Earth? You're looking... real flat all of a sudden. <laughs> the moon is trying to play in its escape, but that is super weird. What if I do another... Oh, oh no, no, now it's like a shadow. <laughs> So, if I open multiple black holes, there we go, perfect. There's the flat Earth we know and love, and as we watch it get completely demolished. And you finally got yours too, Moon! That's what I'm talking about. Oh, wait, crap. Uh, three black holes, probably not gonna play well with everything else. How you feeling, son? I'll take that as bad. Yeah, Venus, always the first to go, just gonna dive balls deep. There we go, yeah. Well, it, it's not all that different. Actually, I kind of would have expected all three of the black holes to combine to make one like, super black hole. But the sun managed to destroy one of them. Or make two of them combine? Not sure, I should really like read a book before I play this game. 
Speaking of reading a book, I'm willing to bet a whole bunch of you guys don't know about this planet. It's called Ganymede? Ganymede? Okay, I, I can read it, I can't pronounce it. Point is, again, the lizard people of NASA covered up its existence, but it's out there, and I'm kinda curious what it's all about. It's, it it kinda just looks like a moon. I'm thinking if I hit it with a smaller moon, then maybe they'll copulate, and we can have a whole bunch of moon babies? Yeah, you see all of the little chunks flying off? Those are moon babies. <laughs> and yeah, it's just a giant rock. A marble in space. I guess I could keep hurling moons into its hole. I, I do have consent, don't I? <laughs> Everything is fine. This is a very strange planet because there's nobody living here. There's no one dead, so there's never been any life. I'm pretty much just bowling moons through it because I'm bored. Is this what God does? Is this what it feels like to be God? We've seen a whole lot of the shield now, and we know that it'll defend against technological and biological attacks. I'm pretty sure the space worm will just kind of bump its stupid head off the shield and then bugger off. <gasps> but you guys were telling me that I might be able to use the shield a little bit more offensively? as opposed to defensively, like if I summon a worm and summon a shield, then we might be able to race down to the surface, open up, and cut the worm in half? Oh, it actually worked! I mean, the front half is still running train on the insides of our planet, but it's not that much worm, so it should fill up quite a bit sooner. So would I be able to do something like that to Cthulhu? We're gonna try this on Earth because it feels way more epic defending a populated planet from a giant space octopus. Okay, well, I don't think the shield worked quite according to plan there. <laughs> Nothing is gonna stand between Cthulhu and his Mexican food. I don't even wanna know what kind of diarrhea an eldritch god gets. I take it back, we can't keep losing Mexico's. Hopefully, if I time it a little bit differently here on the planet, oh, it actually worked. Yeah, you can see all the little Cthulhu tentacle bits floating around. That's amazing. <laughs> and the shield is fine. I mean, the, the space butthole closed up eventually because there was no Cthulhu left to keep it open. I can't believe that. This shield is way better than you would think. I wonder if anything else could defend against Cthulhu. Like, what if I launched an antimatter bomb right into his... Oh, he just kind of ignored it. <laughs> yeah, he took a bite out of the piece that was anti-mattering, and then we got our explosion. <laughs> yeah, this is why you do these things not on Earth, because... Now we have another moon for when our moon decides to abandon us again. <laughs> All right, I, I, I think I gotta wrap things up. So you know what, I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Solar Smash, guys. I love this game. I'm so happy that it's still getting updates and I really hope that System Smash gets expanded on. But in the meantime, if you guys wanna see me play something like Universe Sandbox Sim, then let me know. It looks really complicated, so I've always been kind of afraid to try it, but if you guys keep supporting these videos, then I might not have any other choice. But thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.